Hi, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and today I'm actually gonna go and explain to you guys the build that I, I officially you know I've decided that I want to play for the one week race. So we're gonna go over a couple topics right here. I'm gonna show you guys the full-on outline of the build which you're looking at right now. I'm gonna explain the progression of the build. I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna be leveling with in the skill tree following it. And then I'm going to go over the fact that the race starts in 14 hours, so I can't wait to see you guys there. And on top of that, we're going to go over the progression of skill gems that I'm going to be taking from the quest rewards. Now, I don't want to tell you guys, you know, I'm going to marathon stream for 47 hours straight, because every time I try to marathon, something bad goes wrong. I don't know why, it's just how life is. So I'm just going to tell you guys I'm going to stream until I get bored, and we'll just see where it takes us. You know, we're all just here to have a good time. So, the skills I plan on leveling with are probably like Lightning Tendrils, Fire Trap, Flame Blast, Searing Bond, and then the ultimate transition into Dual Shockwave Totems. So with that, we're going to go ahead and reset it, and let's start. Now, just to clarify, as stated before, I plan on leveling with Searing Bond and Flame Blast. So, we're going to start off with our two spell damage nodes, grab Casting Speed. Now, it's really up to you. I mean, you know, it's probably better to grab spell damage, actually. But the only reason why I'd say casting speed is it doesn't affect, uh, or spell damage does not affect Searing Bond. But it should be okay regardless because, I mean, you don't get Searing Bond until a little while in the game. So we're going to grab Elemental Dominion and grab Elemental Damage up through here. Elemental Damage will work for Searing Bond and Flame Blast and pretty much any skill you decide to use. Uh, from here we're going to go across, grab our Life Nodes, and we're going to stop right here. Now the goal from right here is to move one, two, three down. By this point in time, we should be leveling a shockwave totem from someone else, probably even a decoy totem because we are a totem spec, and we're probably going to need a strength node. I don't think we'll need a dex node, but we're probably going to need the strength node to keep leveling our gems. So we're going to move across one, two. We're going to grab our life nodes here. Uh, I do not believe we grab Searing Bond until like mid 30s, maybe 31 or something, 28. Uh, so we're not getting it yet, so we do not need to grab Holy Fire. Uh, so we are going to be having Fire Trap and Flame Blast by this level. So if you really want to go up and get more damage with Heart of Flame, you can, but just know you're going to be respecting this later. So from here, we've got some more options. Uh, I'm not going to grab the AoE because I do, like Searing Bond, I'm pretty sure is going to be more effective than Flame Blast uh, for me, which very well may or may not be true, but we'll see how that goes. So we're going to go ahead and move down. One, two, three just like so, grab our athleticism, move down, and we can grab double totem by like level like 33 or something, which I think is really neat. So from the double totem section, I'm gonna move down again, grab barbarism, move across, and grab totem damage, fizz reduction, elemental resistance, totemic mastery, and now we have three additional extra damage nodes, eight, eight, and, and eight, which is eight, 16, 24% damage, which is pretty neat. But instead, we're going to go ahead and move down and grab Constitution, and we're going to leave... I mean, you could go Life, 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 but you don't want Path of the Warrior until you're actually going uh, Shockwave Totem. So I'm just going to leave this alone. So at this point, uh, I guess even before this, probably around when you get Double Totem, uh, so I guess we can. you would drop the bottom part, but you would definitely have Holy Fire by this point in time, which I'm pretty sure, you know, of course, whenever you get Searing Bond, you're skilling into Holy Fire. So now, from this scenario, you have a couple options you can go. You can move across in and grab Templars, all full elemental damage with the Mono Regeneration node. If you're running Arctic Armor by this point in time, you could also grab Shaper. From here, you still have options to go over here, and you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and grab Eldritch Battery. Probably going to grab Eldritch Battery a bit sooner. Like I said, it's really based on uh, your playstyle. Grab Heart and Soul and put it into Deep Wisdom. Now, by this section here, or by this area, 76, you're in, the, you're in like your mid-60s or so. You're getting ready to go Shockwave Totem, and because of that, it's time to respec. So here we go. Excuse me. Uh, first point we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect into the AoE. So that would be six points in, and we're going to drop one, two, three, four. From here, we're going to connect... One, two, three, like this. One, two, three, and drop one, two, three, four, five. From here, we're going to connect one, two, three, oops, 
and drop one, two, three, four. Oop. All right, so the reason why we did this is ultimately we're definitely running double curse. Uh, double curse is always, always an option if you're going totems. And sovereignty, you do not pick up unless you're really mana starved or if you do find a cloak of defiance. You find a cloak of defiance, you grab sovereignty. Sovereignty is very good. Now, if you really don't want to go ahead and take this route, you could just go this way and drop the 1 2. But the plan is to definitely take sovereignty in my setup. So we're going to move across. Now, uh, from this area that you're in right now, you've got your. So pick up our crit, pick up our AoE. You've got your. You're pretty much your fundamentals and witches set. If you want damage, you can grab cast speed. You want your energy shield regeneration by this point because you're definitely running arctic armor. Uh, this all looks good, it's clean. Uh, we'll go into one more other thing with power charges later, but we're going to go ahead and come through the Templar, grab Amplify, move down, and grab Discipline and Training for one point, well, two points here. Uh, this is all set up. You want to grab Path of the Warrior by this point, and now you're pretty much going towards little niche things that you want to change with your character. So you want more life, you have five life nodes. So we're currently sitting at 149% life. Feel free to grab more. That's 10, 20, 25% more life you can still grab. Uh, other variations would include like grabbing power charges. If you were to do a crit, because like I said, right now I am crit, but I'm not really crit. I just have crit because having crit doesn't hurt. Um, it's just like, it's like free damage nodes. And the reason why I say that is I'm stacking cast speed on my Shockwave Totem character. Because you're stacking casting speed, you're going to crit. You have hatred, so your hatred's going to freeze. And it kind of works like that. Uh, as for getting the decks for hatred, you can find it on gear. You can roll decks on your gloves. You can roll decks on your rings. You can roll decks on your necklace. I think you might even be able to roll decks on boots as well. I could be wrong on that one. So, uh, But other variations of this will include the following. You could go a block version. Um, so we're going to grab like right here, this block section here. You could uh, do a little match up here if you wanted to drop some points. You could go one, two, three, connect, uh, and drop like one, and then grab shield block, shield block, and play the defenses. You could move across one point and grab spiritual guardian. You could go ahead and just grab your whole mind barrier. So there are block variations as well. We're gonna go ahead and grab throat seeker and I guess by grabbing Throat Seeker, we do have the option of moving down and grabbing Dex and Strength if you really wanted to. But, um, and then actually there's even optional cast speed here. Look at that. 3, 3, and 6. 4, 8, 12. And get cast speed here. So this is pretty much the extent. I don't plan on getting this high, but you never really know what happens. Actually, 92 is not that bad. You never really know what happens. You have the option of Deep Thoughts. Deep Thoughts is probably going to be picked up in the build. I'm not 100% sure. It really depends on my gear at that point. Um, remember, sovereignty is not picked up unless uh, you have the actual like cloak of defiance to run it. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much the outline of the character. It's pretty solid. I'm pretty excited to play it. Um, and uh, there's many very different variations for you guys. I forgot one note as well. Sorry, I'm a little tired here. Seven percent reduced mana cost with press ignition or press decapitation, which is six percent cast speed and twenty percent mana regeneration. And the 7% reduced mana cost is actually pretty substantial when it comes to casting double totems because they're, they're over 100 mana cost each, so you're knocking at least 7 mana per cast, so you cast 5 times a second for some reason. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Good job, we learned to count. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty excited for the character. It definitely should, it should have the damage. I don't really see an issue with it. Uh, you could even do a twist if you wanted to and come down and get, like, Ironwood. Um... I don't really think Ironwood is worth it, but you do get Cruelty, and I don't know how effective Crit is on Shockwave, so I know it's strong, I just don't know how consistent it is. Um, so that's pretty much the spin on this character. Of course, this will be linked down below with this exact setup. I'll POE URL it right here for you guys. So next up, I want to go ahead and explain the questing part right here. So. With the questing section, we've got numerous options. I lied, you don't. Um, but anyway, so we're starting off Witch, and uh, I, like, I like to go Lightning Tendrils. I'm a big fan of Lightning Tendrils. I've raced with it, I feel confident with it, I really enjoy the skill. Um, it's going to scale off spell damage at the start, so that's what I'm grabbing. 
Next up is definitely Fire Trap. Fire Trap hits so hard, uh, is very safe, and is really good for fighting like tanky ES mobs. You make sure they're all the pressure is always on. The burning ground is there. When you're doing Dominus, for example, it will not let his ES heal up. It's a very solid skill, and we're grabbing fire damage as well. Synergizes extremely well with Searing Bond and Double Totems, because if you're Double Totems, you can't actually deal damage with skills anymore. You have to use Totems. Or sorry, you can't... Basically, you can use Fire Trap, because Fire Trap is its own entity. It's not It's not you. So, But you guys, you guys should know that. Or you can just look it up. It's okay. Um, then we have Detonate Dead. Detonate Dead is the next option here. Yeah, the purpose of detonate dead is just going through really quickly whenever you ID that box and it says like detonates all corpses just boom, 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 boom just detonating um, you don't really need EK, cold snap, fire stone, none of this you really need the only good thing here for leveling would be ice nova but you have lightning tendrils and you have fire trap and uh, I've, I've shown that in a race lightning tendrils and fire trap is very effective as it's I mean everyone knows fire trap but lightning tendrils is very effective in itself so for this option here I really want to grab Flame Blast. Um, I really don't want to level with Flame Blast, but I really want to grab Flame Blast because of all the fire damage we're getting, and we don't get Searing Bond until a little bit later down the line. So Clarity, kind of need it, but Flame Blast, you kind of need it more. You can run on Meta Potions. Everybody does it. It's been done numerous times. I do it all the time in my builds. You could just buy a Clarity. Just make sure you level with a Flame Blast. All right, next up, Fork, Added Lightning Damage, Minion Life. We're going to take Added Lightning. Added Lightning goes in your Flame Blast. Uh, by the RNG that you crit, the bosses will get one shot. Moving down, we have Arctic Armor, Barrage, blah, 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 flammability. This is what you want here. Arctic Armor, you're, you don't need to level it, like, low level. It's not going to do anything for you. Barrage, you don't need. Desecrate, you don't need. Like, none of this stuff you actually need. Flammability is like, like an auto win. Uh, Assassin's Mark, you could argue if you want it. Doesn't really matter to me. I mean, Assassin's Mark vulnerability would be a really sick double curse combo. But, um... For the sake of running with a group of elemental damage, I'm going to be running elemental weakness, vulnerability most likely, which will get swapped up later on. But flammability is probably the, the best choice to go. So from here we have chance to ignite. Um, Cat, what are you doing? Psst, come here. Psst. Oh shit, come here. What? Why are you fucking grunting at me? Anyway, he's being a little stupid bit. Alright, so we have LMP, doesn't, doesn't help us, Chance to Ignite, it's probably the favored one just because multipliers are very low on Chance to Ignite, uh, it's a 10% multiplier, it gives a good chance to burn, and we're probably going to be picking up increased burn damage, I don't know when because of you know the Searing Bond uh, scenario here, Minion damage doesn't work, Minion and Totem Elemental Resistance really isn't a bad option either, I mean there's not too much stuff you put in a Searing Bond, so having Minion and Totem Elemental Resistance really doesn't hurt it. I, I forgot exactly what you use. I know it's Searing Bond in a plus one weapon or plus two weapon favored with increased burn damage and then you don't use Empowered because you're not going to be leveling with an Empower. So I forgot what the third link is. I really did forget what the third link is. So <laughs> I'm assuming Minion Totem Elemental Resistance really wouldn't be too bad. Uh, I, could, I could very well be missing something here. But anyway, by uh, Lost in Love, in Normal Act 3, we finally get our Searing Bond, which is what we will be leveling with. It's also known as our baby. Sadly, we don't get Herald of Thunder, which I really I really like, because cursing with Herald of Thunder is like the new thing. Uh, it seems pretty neat. But let's go ahead and scroll down. Our options are right here. So we've got... Pretty much the only thing here that we could take would be like Fire Pen, but I do not believe Fire Pen works for Searing Bond. I've never played Searing Bond before, but I believe you need to have an initial hit for the penetration on the support jump to work. Curses are a little different. I don't believe this one will work. Um, but, I mean, you could take increased crit damage if you wanted for your Shockwave Totem, depending on what links you want. So, Or this could just be to your friends. You know, you could be like, hey, do you, I can get you a Lightning Pen, and you can get you a Blood Magic or something. So this is uh, your kind of like your own choice in what you want to do here. So for this section here, we've got Purity of Lightning, Curse on Hit, Cast One Stun, Temp Chains, etc. My favorite is by far Temp Chains. I'm a huge Temp Chains fan. Um, depending on whatever boss you're doing, Temp Chains is very, very important uh, when you can just potentially get one shot. Now moving on, it's a Cruel Act 1 now. I'm going to go ahead and have to grab Discipline. I don't know if I'm actually going to run it, but if I'm running Eldritch Battery and you want to scale Arctic Armor, Discipline's like one of the Discipline Clarity combo is like the best thing to do. 
Um, so moving downward into Mercy Mission, we get our increased burn damage, very important. Uh, and we get all this in Cruel Act 1, which is really good. So by Cruel Act 2, we've got our Searing Bond, we've got our plus 1. Uh, hopefully we have, you know, like a 20% 20% elemental damage uh, weapon with a plus one fire with an extra fire roll and like something crazy so that would be like super super awesome so we're gonna keep scrolling down here alright so here in act one cruel we can get our clarity now and that's not too bad like act one cruel is not that far away so we have the option of clarity. Uh, lightning warp is pretty neat for racing, but I mean, it, it, you could find a lightning warp. I'm sure you could buy one off someone, no problem. The only other like conflicting issues is that vulnerability is your end game curse when you're soloing. Vulnerability for shockwave totem is like sex for men and women alike with monkeys, and uh, purity of elements is always great to have when racing. It's like it's like the the bread and butter for everything. It's like oh, I don't have resist cap one button okay sure there we go uh, so purity of elements is always super super good uh, moving downward definitely reduce mana here over anything reduce mana is is like your godsend it allows you to run that extra aura it allows you to you know curse quicker allows you to drop that mana potion for another quicksilver there's a lot of options to take so we're just going down a little bit here and then i'll let you guys you know do whatever you'd like uh, with this scenario here increased duration spell totem blah, blah, blah. we've got a lot of options here um, increased AoE is probably what you're going to take. No, I lied. Definitely faster casting. Faster casting is what you're taking here. Trap is also another good option because trapping with Vol Gems creates... It's really nice. Like, trapping Vol Fireball and just... And then it just... So, trap is pretty cool, but faster casting is, is definitely what you want to grab. You could even trade with faster casting itself for some other stuff. So here we're coming down. We have the option again. We have Herald of Ash, which is pretty good or Shockwave Totem, um, we have Pure Developments again, Vulnerability, so it's really your choice here, depending on what you take, you already took Discipline, so that gets crossed off, um, you haven't taken your Curse for Vulnerability, so this is probably going to be your priority right here, is Vulnerability. Looks like we get increased Burn Damage again, we get another Reduced Mana, we get another Faster Casting, and we get an AoE Increase. Um, you're probably going to want two faster castings because you want to flip them because when you're racing you're probably if you're like in like super competitive state you're probably going to flip your gems at least one well definitely one time um, so it's your choice on how you want to do it but I would say take a second faster casting and or take your AoE increase because AoE increase is really good as well and uh, you're going to be using this as your five well your fourth and five link in shockwave totem so leveling it ASAP is actually really important so it's your choice on that one as well so moving down, it kind of gets into like the same repetitive stuff now. You've got another faster cast, and you've got another AoE increase. It's really your choice. Uh, Iron Will does not do anything for you. Increased duration, I guess if you want an Immortal Call setup, chance to flee, etc. So it's really your choice here. Next up, we have uh, Shockwave Totem. <laughs> uh, Decoy Totem, Lightning Warp, Putative Elements, Righteous Fire. So here, definitely Lightning Warp uh, is probably, it's, either, it's definitely Lightning Warp by this point in time. Uh, Lightning Warp and Act 1 means that you'll have it way before maps, so you're good to go here. Uh, furthermore, inside this scenario here, again, it's faster casting an area of effect, and it pretty much just keeps repeating itself. So that's pretty much where I'm going to end the video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys, you know, I hope that if anyone's playing it, it's effective for them. I really do feel like it's going to turn out to be really well. It's, it actually is a lot more tanky than the previous Shockwave Totem. It, it can get like 170% life with a Cloak of Defiance, so it's definitely a bit different from my other Scion, um, and it favors running Arctic Armor as well. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I'm sorry it was a bit too long, remember if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube, and to know when I go live, you can just check all my info down below in the settings menu, or look right down here at twitch.tv slash pox, or you can check out my Twitter to know when I go live, I tweet every time, with a little Kappa tweet tweet, uh, sometimes I do nude pictures of myself showing half a nipple and stuff, but uh, anyway, hope you guys have a great time. Uh, fun fact for you guys, Milano cookies are currently at sale at my uh, local Walgreens, and they taste very good and yummy. So anyway, hope to see you guys tomorrow. Or actually, no, not tomorrow. Hope to see you guys later today on the stream. And uh, take care, everybody. You know I bugged out and I can't find my stop recording button, sad face.